Hi everybody, I'm Rachel from Rachel Cooks with Love. Today I'm going to be making meatloaf. I love this recipe that I'm going to prepare for you. So let's get started. You know, this meatloaf that I'm going to prepare for you is just the perfect recipe. I make this about twice a month because it makes fantastic leftovers also. You know, if you've never had a meatloaf sandwich, you need to try it. It's just awesome. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I've got two slices of bread here. And this is some of my home-baked bread that I make. Uh, if you haven't seen my home-baked bread video, go down to the bottom. I'm going to put a link there so you can watch it if you're interested. But anyway, it's two slices of wheat bread that I've got here. You can use, you know, just regular white bread. You can use pretty much any type of bread that you want. So what I did was I went ahead and just cut it up into little pieces like this. Just kind of shredded it up small. You don't want real big chunks. Now to this, I'm going to add some milk. And I'm going to add just enough to get it nice and wet. Probably about half a cup, I would say. And I'm just going to mix it up really good. Make sure that it's all nice and wet. Like that. I'll add a little pinch more. Just like that. And then I'm going to set it aside. You know, if you don't want to use bread, if you don't have any bread or don't like bread, you can use crackers. I've done it with salting crackers. I've done it with, with uh, rolled oats. I've done it with butter crackers I've tried different ones I think that my favorite is just the regular bread now that I got it nice and wet I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna get my meat ready now I have two pounds of ground beef here that I had in my refrigerator and I have one pound that is very lean and I have one pound that is 80-20. I love 80-20 meat because it just has a fantastic flavor. So since I have the two here, I'm going to mix it up together. But before I do that, I'm going to put my spices and everything in, else into it. So I'm going to put my meat in a big bowl that I can work with. Now I've got one celery rib right here. And I cut it up in real tiny little pieces. Real tiny little pieces like this. Because I wanted to give it its flavor, but I don't want big chunks of celery. So I've got one celery rib right here. Put that in there. And then I have about a third of a medium small green bell pepper. And I also cut it into very tiny little pieces. Because I wanted to give it its flavor, but I don't want big chunks of bell pepper in there either. And then I've got two garlic cloves. And these were like medium size. And I minced them really small. So I'm going to put the two garlic cloves in here. And then I've got one medium onion. I also chopped it nice and small. So I'm going to add all that in there. Just like that. You want every little piece. Now if you don't want to use fresh onion you can use uh, onion powder or minced onion I like fresh onion now in here I've got some parsley so I'm gonna add about I'll use one teaspoon and then I've got some of my all-around seasoning my all-around seasoning has every spice that I like for meatloaf if you haven't yet seen my all-around seasoning video. I'm going to put a link below also so you can watch that. I always have it handy and it's perfect on just about any kind of meat. And it's perfect here too. So I'm going to put a half of a teaspoon in here like that. And I think it's just perfect. Now if you don't have this ready and you have some maybe seasonal or any kind of seasoning that you like, you can use that and it's all good. Now I'm going to add some salt in here. Salt is up to you. You can add as much as you want. I'm just going to put a good amount. You want 
you know, some salt in it. And then the pepper, the same thing. You can put as much black. I like to put quite a bit of black pepper in here. But you can use as much as you want. You know, with a meatloaf, but I like to put enough spices in there to where every bite tastes delicious. So that's what I like to do. Now I've got some Worcestershire sauce here. Worcestershire, Worcestershire. That's what I've got here. So I'm going to put in about, oh, I would say about two tablespoons. I like that in there. And then I've got two eggs. Now the eggs are very important in a meatloaf because the eggs is what kind of brings it together and keeps it together, kind of like a glue. So I like to do that. And so is your bread. So I'm going to put two eggs in here. Just like that. And then, now I've got my bread. And it's been sitting here for just a little bit. So I'm going to dump my bread in here. See? With the milk and all. Just like that. Now with very clean hands. And it's important that your hands are nice and clean. I'm going to bring it all in together. It, there just doesn't seem to be an easier way. Now, when I'm working the meat, when you work your meat, you don't want to overwork it. Because I don't know if you've ever noticed, but some meat loaves look like, like spam, you know, real compressed. And I think it's because they have been really overworked. So you want to just work it enough to where everything comes in together, but you don't want to overwork it really, really a lot. Because then when you put it in your pan, it's going to get real compressed, and I don't like that. So you want to just work it in there carefully. Make sure that there aren't any big chunks of meat without seasoning. Just like that. And all these chunks of onion and all these chunks of um, bread and all that just kind of disappear and they just go into the meat so you want to make sure that all your meat has the spices the salt the parsley the pepper just like that as you can see it's all come together really good see just like that mmm I can smell the garlic in there and my seasoning is in there it just smells wonderful. Okay, so I want it to be just nice and loose like this. I don't want it to be all clumped up tight, just like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it into my pan. Now I'm gonna put it in here and I'm gonna try not to press it in too hard. Just like this. You can use really just about any pan that, that you have or that you like. Of course, I always use a loaf pan, but if you want to use a round pan or a square one, it doesn't matter because once it's all done and you slice it up real good, it's just so perfect. And you make some here. Just like this. Now what happens is that after, I want every little piece in there of my onions and my bell pepper. So what happens is that it kind of shrinks down a little bit. So when you've got it in your pan, you do want to push it down just a little bit like that. Just like that. And it will shrink some because it's going to release a lot of its grease. And I will drain it about halfway through. And you want to give it a nice, nice shape because that's how it's going to come out. I always leave a little space right here on the sides like this. Just a little bit. Trying to make it like into a little dome like that. 
just like that. See? So now I'm going to rinse my hands and then I'm going to prepare my sauce that I'm going to put over it. So I've got everything that I need up here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put some ketchup in a bowl. And I want about one and a half cups to about one and a half cups is good. I'm just going to eyeball it. But I have a feeling this is a perfect one and a half cups. Just like that. There we go. And then to this, I'm going to add one teaspoon of dry mustard. Now, if you don't have dry mustard, I love dry mustard on gravies and on certain things. But if you don't have dry mustard, you can use a little bit of... Uh, apple cider vinegar, you can use some horseradish, just something that'll give it, you know, a nice zing. That's why I like the dry mustard. Or you can even use your regular yellow mustard or a good brown mustard if you have some. So I'm going to use one teaspoon of dry mustard, put it in there. It's just so perfect on this. And then I'm going to add a fourth, about a fourth of a heaping fourth cup of brown sugar. And I add it in there, just like that. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of the Worcestershire sauce, just a little bit like that. And I like to put in just a little pinch of paprika. But it's optional, you don't have to. And then you mix it up really good like this. And this just makes the best sauce to go over your your meatloaf. Just make sure that you mix it up really, really good. I love sweet and salty. And it is just so good on meatloaf. Okay, so I've got it nice and mixed like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it over right here. Let me put this on my pan my drip pan right here just like that and I'm not gonna put the whole thing but I'm gonna put just enough to go over it like this just like that And this meatloaf is just packed with flavor. Just packed with flavor with all the spices that it's got inside. And then this is just perfect over it like this. So at about the halfway point or so, I will come back and I will drain it. And then I'll add a little bit more of this and I'll let you see it. So I've got my oven at 350 and I'm gonna put it into my oven for about 55 minutes I don't think I'll go an hour but I'll be prepared for an hour if I have to but I will get to the midpoint and I'll show it to you you don't have to cover it or anything just like that and then I'll be back I've got about 15 minutes before the timer goes off and it's at this time that I'm gonna go ahead and check it and it's looking beautiful. I add a little bit more sauce. So I like it nice and thick. So I'm going to add just a little bit more on top like this. Just where I feel that it needs it. Just like that. And I'm going to quickly check the center of it. Just to check the temperature. And it's almost there so I'm gonna put it back in the oven got about 15 minutes to go and I want it to be about 160 degrees from the inside I've got some water boiling where I'm going to prepare my potatoes for my mashed potatoes also my timer just went off I'm gonna turn off my oven Ooh, 
it smells wonderful. Just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go ahead and check the temperature inside. And I want it to be about 160 degrees inside. And it's going up, it's going up. There it is. It's perfect. 160 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit for about 10 minutes right here. If you go in there and cut it right away, it may fall apart on you. So it's always a good idea to let it just sit for a few minutes. So while I do that, I'm gonna make my mashed potatoes. And I just turned these off too. And they're nice and hot. So I'm gonna drain them. Just like that. See? Oh, mashed potatoes is perfect with this dish. You know, if you don't serve mashed potatoes with it, if you don't wanna serve mashed potatoes with it, you can always serve, um, like uh, pasta, you know, you can make noodles. Buttered noodles are always delicious. So I'm going to put in about, I like a lot of butter on my mashed potatoes. So I'm going to put in about let me see three-fourths of a stick. Let it go in and melt a little bit like that. I'll push the butter down to the bottom, like that. Give it just a few seconds. I'm gonna add some milk. Give the butter just a few seconds to melt totally, just like that. I'm gonna add some salt first. Like that. Some pepper. You can add as much as you want. Then I'm going to add some milk. And I'm going to whip them up. And they are so good when you whip them up. Like I said, if you don't want to serve mashed potatoes with your meatloaf, you can uh, serve it like buttered noodles, just with butter and pepper. I love that. But my Ron loves mashed potatoes. It's his favorite. And I usually add enough milk just until they're very, very creamy. I like them real creamy. Let's see. Oh my gosh. They're perfect. Look at this. See that? Mmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and Let them sit for just a little bit until my meatloaf is ready. So it's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and slice into it. You know, like I said, I like to leave it for about 10 minutes to sit because it just firms up just really nice and it doesn't fall apart on you. Ooh. 
I'm going to go ahead and serve it on my plate. Yes. Oh, let me get my mashed potatoes first. I love mashed potatoes with this dish. So I'll put my mashed potatoes like this. Just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and get me one of these slices out. Look at that. Can you see that? See how beautiful it looks from the inside? Look at that. Look at that slice. Mmm. Just like that. And it's very juicy. Very juicy. You see how it's not like real thick and clumpy. It's just perfect like that, just the way I like it. Now for the taste test. Mm. So easy, look at that. Very, very hot. Oh my gosh. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Super, super tender. It's not dry at all. Look at that. Mm, and then with some mashed potatoes and the topping on top, my sauce is wonderful. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's delicious. I was going to say that we have a little bit left over. I always make sure that we have a little bit left over. And if you want some more, you can just put it on top. So this is my delicious meatloaf. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. Share with your friends. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Send me a note, a comment. Tell me what you think. Thank you so much.